Welcome to lesson six in the 13 part tutorial series looking at how to create your own fully working Pac-Man game in Scratch. Now so far we have a maze that contains our animated Pac-Man character and we can move that Pac-Man character around the maze. We've also added code in the last lesson that prevents Pac-Man from being able to walk through any of the walls. So he is locked to the maze and we have to make sure that we guide him through the passageways. But there's a problem, because this isn't how Pac-Man moves. If you've ever played the real Pac-Man game, you'll be aware that as we start the game, he begins moving automatically, and he will just continue to move in whichever direction we face him, so he doesn't stand still. And at the moment, of course, he only moves if we press the keys on the keyboard. Now, as I've said throughout this tutorial series, you're not necessarily creating the exact same game as I am, or indeed the exact same game as the original Pac-Man. You're creating your own Pac-Man style game. And you may prefer to be able to have a movement arrangement like this, where Pac-Man can stand still. Uh, however, if you would like to be able to change this so that Pac-Man moves in a more traditional way, so he's constantly moving, I'll show you how to do that. But there's also something else as well. If I was to, let's just um, come out of full screen here for a moment and move Pac-Man over here and run the game. So if I move Pac-Man, let's say right to the top of the game here, just go right to the very top like that, and then I stop the game and I restart the game, he is still at the top. So the start stop doesn't actually reset Pac-Man and he's going to end up just starting each game wherever the last game left off, which isn't what we want. Well, so what we want to do is to make sure that two things happen. One, Pac-Man is always reset to the start position, wherever you want that to be, at the beginning of each new game. And two, that we change the movement code here so he's constantly moving and the only thing that we do is to simply change the direction of that movement. So, step one. Position Pac-Man where you want him to be at the beginning of the game. I'm going to position him in the middle here just like that. There we go. So make sure he's not inside a wall, of course, or he's going to get trapped right at the very beginning, but uh, position him where you want him to be. Now once you've done that, if you look in the motion category on the left here, you'll see that there's a block that says go to, where we are, go to X, Y just here. Now the numbers in there will be different to the numbers that I've got. I have 1 on the x-axis and minus 89 on the y-axis. And those coordinates are the coordinates that I have moved Pac-Man to. Now you'll see if I move him and decide that the start position is going to be up here instead, these numbers haven't updated but if you have a look at the block on the left, you'll see the numbers in this block have updated. So I've moved him up and very slightly to the left, so he's now at minus 120. So make sure that you know where you want him to begin and get that coordinate block. And then in this section here, where we have all of our up, down, left and right keys, just before the forever loop starts, move that block up to the top there and that means whenever we start running the game he will immediately jump to that start position so no matter where we position him as soon as we start the game he jumps to that start position but we also want to make sure that he's facing the right way because of course it's possible that in the last uh, game that we played the last direction we were going was up in which case that's going to be the same direction he'll still be facing now. So what we need to do is to make sure that as well as starting in this position here, he's also pointing in the right direction. So we're going to get the point in direction block and in this way just make sure that he's pointing in whatever direction you want him to be facing to start with. 
Uh, Pac-Man normally starts facing to the right, but again, if you want to have your game so he's immediately going left or up or down, that's entirely up to you. Just drag this around and leave it where you want it to point. So now I can bring the forever block up here, and I know that whenever I start the game, he's going to jump to this position and be facing towards the right. But what about making sure he constantly moves? Well, that's going to require changing the code inside our forever block. And in fact, the code is going to be a lot simpler. So in the last lesson, we looked at how to control the character starting, stopping and not going through walls. The code for him to constantly move with us pressing keys just to change direction is a lot simpler. Let's pull all of the code out of our forever loop and just put the empty forever loop back there for the moment. I'm also going to just break this apart because you'll see that we have five sections here, uh, four of them very similar. So these first four if blocks here, I'll zoom in slightly so you can see that more clearly. Each of these simply uh, are looking out for a particular key on your keyboard for moving up, down, left and right. In this case, it's looking for W, which is the up direction. And then if you press that key, <clears throat> the computer asks a question, as long as we are not touching the blue color of the maze, then point in the direction and move forward five. Now, what we're gonna do is remove the if block from inside that section just there. And then what I'm going to do is grab just the point in direction block and put that back inside there. And in fact, I no longer need this bit here. Now, what about this move five steps? Well, I will need that, but I'll only need one of them. And that will simply go in my forever block there right at the beginning. So I'm forever moving forward five steps. And then if we press the W key, we point in the direction zero or up. Let's do the same with the S or down. So I'm going to pull the block out from the middle, then grab the point in direction block and put that back in and get rid of the rest. So now I go down to the A block, which is for moving left. Again, pull the if block from out of the outer if block, grab the point in direction and put that inside there and get rid of the rest. And then finally D, pull out the middle block, grab the point in direction block and put it back, get rid of everything else. And then finally we have this if touching the color blue then moves uh, five steps backwards and what I'm going to do is bring that back up to the top and put that inside the forever loop just underneath the move five steps. So that goes inside the loop like that, which means that we've got our forever loop now saying constantly move five steps forwards. And then if we're touching the color blue, then move five steps backwards. So if we run the game now, you'll see that Pac-Man runs forwards and then as soon as he hits that blue wall, he stops. So I'm not pressing anything on the keyboard. Again, if I stop and without touching the keyboard, press the green flag, there he goes. He moves constantly in that direction, the direction that we chose. So now if we put all of these key direction blocks back together again, like that, so we have those four, we can put these inside the forever loop just underneath this other if block here. So that goes in just there, like that. So now we have this section of code saying, go to the start position, point in the right direction, and then constantly move five steps forwards, unless we're touching the blue color, in which case move five steps backwards. And then if the user presses any of these keys, then simply change the direction. So let's now go full screen and run this. And there we are, I'm not pressing the keyboard yet. He's run to that wall. If I press A, he will turn to the left. And again, without holding A down, he will constantly move in that direction. I tap W, I think he's just slightly touching the wall. There we are. So you can see that as he's moving around, I'm only touching each direction key once. 
um, which means I have to time it right to get him through the maze. So you see sometimes he's able to move just a little bit uh, too far down the maze. The uh, corridor is a little bit wider than he is. We can play around with the size for that perhaps. But otherwise he is now able to move like a Pac-Man character does. Yes, he occasionally gets stuck on a wall perhaps, uh, but that's simply the design of our maze being um, a little bit rough, but we can, we can always play with that. Um, but there we are. So if I stop the game and I run the game again, you see again he starts from the start position and starts moving constantly. So there we are. Um, the only way in which we're going to be able to make sure that he doesn't get caught on walls and stop would be add quite a lot of extra code. And for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm keeping things reasonably simple. Um, the thing to do there is to play around with the thickness of the lines, the wideness uh, of the corridors, and also the size of the sprite here. Uh, but obviously we've put code in here that means that if he does touch the wall, he bounces backwards, uh, but he doesn't change direction as well. We're not going to do that. We are going to do that though for the ghosts, because of course we don't want the ghosts to hit a wall and then decide to um, stop. So they will be changing direction constantly, but we don't want to do that for the uh, Pac-Man sprite. So in lesson five and six, you've seen two different ways in which we can control the movement of our Pac-Man character. And it's up to you which one you decide to go for. This is the traditional one. The one I covered in lesson five is more code, but it also gives the user perhaps a little bit more control. So it's up to you which you go for. The one thing that you will need to have for both of them is this starting section here where we go to the start position and point in the right direction. So you will need that one whichever method you go for. So now that we have a Pac-Man character animated and controlled, we have a maze, we've locked him to the maze, and we've put all the code in to control the movement and the resetting, the next thing to do is to give the Pac-Man something to collect. And in the traditional Pac-Man game, we have little yellow pills that he can gobble up and eat. So in lesson seven, we're going to be creating those yellow pills for him to collect. So when you're ready, I'll see you then.